lovelies, it's Murky Meg here. It's Friday the 19th of February and I have good news and I have bad news. The good news... 13 months after the Mexic talks and the Sandringham summit, Harry and Meghan have quit official royal working life. But by doing so and releasing the statements, which I will read out in a few moments, they have made... Now, it's being said as a veiled dig. It's not veiled at all. It's quite simply a very obvious snipe at the Queen. This is what Buckingham Palace statement said. Royal Communications, Friday the 19th of February 2021, Buckingham Palace Statement on the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex have confirmed to Her Majesty the Queen that they will not be returning as working members of the royal family. Following conversations with the Duke, the Queen has written confirming that in stepping away from the work of the royal family, it is not possible to continue with the responsibilities and duties that come with a life of public service. The Honorary military appointments and royal patronages held by the Duke and Duchess will therefore be returned to Her Majesty before being redistributed amongst working members of the royal family. While all are saddened by their decision, the Duke and Duchess remain much loved members of the family. Again, statement of facts, very, very matter of fact, and quick and simple and painless. Interestingly enough, that statement reveals that it was in fact Harry who wrote to the Queen, notifying her of his desire to not still be working members of the royal family. He's aware that the review is coming up, and obviously he wanted to write to her and say, uh, no, we're not coming back. That would have been part and parcel of the exit deal that happened last year in January at the Sandringham Summit. The Queen would have possibly have said, you need to let me know what's happening. The ball is in your court. The door will be left open, but you have 12 months to see if you like it, the way that you want to go, if you want to go on your own, but the door's there. You can always come back. Let's give it 12 months to see how it goes. It was always going to be needed to require Harry to be the one that notifies the Queen within that 12-month review, and I would imagine if he hadn't, she would have stepped in. Now let's take a look at Harry and Meghan's statement. This hasn't come from themselves, it's come from a spokesperson. So it has come from them, but not directly, which again, why would Harry and Meghan even dare to address the Queen publicly? It's just another way of avoiding their responsibilities, isn't it? This is what it says. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex spokesperson said, as evidenced by their work over the past year, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex remain committed to their duty and service to the UK and around the world and had offered their continued support to the organisations they have represented regardless of official role. We can all live a life of service. Service is universal. That's snarling talk, isn't it? I mean, that's childish, bitter and petty. That is a massively veiled swipe at the Queen and it's downright disgusting. I love the fact that it's also made to look like it was their idea. Well, no, it wasn't really. You wanted a half it and half out but couldn't get your way to throw a hissy fit, didn't you? And notice the glaring difference between the two. The Queen mentions them being valued members of the family and Harry and Meghan don't even do that one bit. They don't even thank her for the opportunity. They don't even consider the element of family in their statement. It's just pure venom, really. It's almost as if it's like, well, we can do it on our own, so sod you. Don't need anybody else. The last bit in which they say, we can all live a life of service. Service is universal. Well, is it really, Harry? You've been stripped 
of your military titles. You've been stripped of your patronages. And you've been stripped, both you and Meghan, from your vice president's chairs of the Queen's Commonwealth Trust. That's gonna hurt as well. I would expect the military titles do kind of sting Harry a little bit because we all know he's a perpetual child, he's petulant, and that one he's probably stamping his feet about because Harry expects everything on a plate. Well, not this time. You cannot serve the Queen in your military titles and be swanning around left, right and centre in LA. Doesn't work, mate. There was a few extra additional notes with regards to the Buckingham Palace statement. It says, following the Duke and Duchess of Sussex decision to step away last year as working members of the royal family, a 12-month review was agreed. A decision has now been made after conversations between the Duke of Sussex... Sausage. Oh, God, I always say Duke of Sausage, don't I? Duke of Sussex and members of the royal family. Sausages on the bread. I do apologise. The military, Commonwealth and charitable associations which will revert to the Queen are the Royal Marines, RAF Honington, Royal Navy Small Ships and Diving, the Queen's Commonwealth Trust, the Rugby Football Union. Oh, Harry, that's going to hurt, isn't it? You loved your rugby uh, football union. The Rugby Football League, the Royal National Theatre and the Association of Commonwealth Universities. So basically, they have been stripped of everything apart from their HRH and Duke and Duchess titles. That's all they have left. Personally, I never expected those to be removed. Did I think it was the right thing to do? No, of course not. They don't deserve those titles. Those titles are what bring in the money. Those titles are what bring in the fame. Those titles are what bring in all those lucrative deals. It's simple, really, to retain those HRH and Duke of Duchess titles are to enable them to profit off the royal family even more. Interestingly enough, smart work still won. Megan. So they've written a tweet saying we're delighted to confirm that the Duchess of Sussex will remain patron of Smartworks. We are thankful for everything she's done in support of our clients and look forward to working together in the future. Well let's face it that was really the only one that she ever did any work for. And for Omid Scooby screaming on Twitter that they've now found their freedom. Um no Omid. Do you not remember this is not what they wanted. They wanted a half in half out. They wanted to to continue to collaborate with the Queen. That's right. Almost as if she was their equal. That's what they said on the manifesto. They wanted to continue to collaborate. They wanted a half in, half out. They wanted to retain everything they wanted about the royal family that was given to them, yet still be able to bag those lucrative financial deals and still come in, fanny around with tiaras, ponce around on balconies, wave at crowds and say, hi, look at us, and then bugger off back to California and get all the money. Obviously, the Queen, still smart, said, no, 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 that's not happening. This is not what they really wanted. Omid. They wanted to have both worlds. They wanted their cake and to eat it. So blabbing on about finding freedom, but they may have found their freedom, but it comes at a humongous cost. And that cost is family. It also comes at a cost to their reputation because statements like that make them look like the childish children they really are. Peter Hunt, who is the NHS board director, broadcaster and commenter on constitution and royal issues, summed it up perfectly in one tweet. He put their statements side by side and he said, 13 months on, three statements later, the personal touch is gone and the irritation at choosing freedom over duty shines through. Another interesting tweet that I want to draw your attention to was from Simon McCoy. Now he is a BBC News presenter and he said the test will come when stories about Harry and Meghan are covered by showbiz correspondents rather than royal correspondents. And I think he's just summed it up in one really, hasn't he? At some point in time, they will drop down the list of anybody's interest with regards to royal news because they are no longer technically royal. They're just clingers on now. What they fail to recognise is this statement that they released is their last official statement 
as a royal family member or working royal family member to be technical. Did they thank anybody for their support? No. Did they thank the people for their support? No. Be, you know, let's be honest, it went, but it was there at the beginning. The whole country rejoiced when they married. Finally, Prince Harry had found his happiness. I, for one, was really, really happy that he'd found such an incredible woman to stand by his side and support him. I was really chuffed. Then it all went a bit sour, didn't it? As you can probably tell, because I wax lyrical day on, day off. Did he mention about what a pride he had in his military titles and how saddened he was to not be able to support those veterans, the people that stood by his side? No, just literally threw his toys out and mumbled, Service is universal. Please grow up, you over childish baboon. As you could probably tell, I'm a little bit annoyed because there was no dignity in their statement. There was no thanks. There was nothing but contempt. And I think that sums up everything, doesn't it, about Harry and Meghan. They feel entitled and privileged enough that everything should fall at their feet. And when they don't get it, they throw a tantrum. The real Harry is now coming out. It's always been there. It's just been a cleverly crafted PR mirror, a smokescreen of who Harry should have been. But the real Harry is now standing up and showing his true colours. And he's a perpetual child, fueled by his egotistical, privileged wife. And for this, I say, your majesty, please, for the love of God, strip them of their titles because they will monetize them. They will greedily accept everything on the back of those titles that they possibly can. And they still will release statements and they still will use them for PR puff pieces. This isn't the last of them. We're only just beginning. You know, we have Prince Philip, who is in hospital. And I will say now, I hope that he gets well soon. Apparently, Harry is isolating in California, just in case he has to come over. Well, I say, get your ass on the plane and isolate over here, buster. But of course, that's not going to happen. Because he has Oprah to film, doesn't he? It's not been filmed yet, but almost imminent. How's that going to go down at the moment? I mean, this is going to be an extremely interesting interview if the tone of that statement is anything to go by. And I offer a word of warning, just in case they ever watch these videos. I know I'm deluded, but do you think he's really prepared for the aftermath of this forthcoming interview with Oprah because Harry has never had any foresight whatsoever and Meghan well she just wants the glory doesn't she the fame the glory the money but Harry he knows how damaging royal interviews could be how could he not but why on earth is he doing it at this particular time when this was being announced and he must have known it was being announced because he wrote the letter awful awful timing and it will just now look like a pity party on both sides Meghan and his it will just be a whinge fest I'm afraid and I for one can't wait to watch so I'd love to know your thoughts on all of this are you happy are you sad do you think that their titles should have gone as well why do you think they haven't what do you think of the statements polar opposites from Buckingham Palace to theirs do you think that that was just a veiled swipe or more than a veiled swipe literally a direct attack on the Queen and their right to what they think that they should have as always I would love to know your thoughts thank you very much for watching if you haven't already please subscribe to my youtube channel hit the notification bell and also that like button I'd like to take this opportunity to thank all of my followers for all the tips and all the emails dms that everybody sends to me it really is greatly appreciated so thank you very much for watching once again